this video we are going to learn about systemd. Since 2015, systemd was adopted by all major Linux distributions, and it quickly becomes part of Linux world in general. Despite its criticism, systemd is a fantastic piece of software. It is surprisingly practical, easy to understand and easy to use. So what is systemd? Well, think of systemd as a processes babysitter. It can start, stop other processes, check their status and practically babysits them. I'm sure you already encounter comments like systemd start, stop or status. This is part most developers know systemd for. One of the core features of systemd is that it manages processes dependencies. Say if you have a Python script which depends on Redis database, then that script makes us only to run if Redis is already up and running. And at this sort of processes dependencies management is where systemd shines. Don't confuse processes dependencies with software library dependencies, which is a different story. Systemd was invented to speed up booting of Linux operating system. And it does this very well. But we are not going to look at that part. We are interested here in systemd usefulness from the point of view of Python developer. Let's focus on that. Systemd supports system and user services. Easy way to think of this is that system services are those who run under privileged users like root, although this definition is not 100% accurate. And user services are those owned and managed by your user. All operations for user services have user argument. System services store their configurations under folder like slash etc and slash lib, and they require sudo permissions to manage them. User services, on the other hand, store their configurations under your user home directory. In this video, we are going to focus on this part. To convince systemd to babysit your application, or to say it in fancy terms, to create a user service from your application, you need to create so-called service unit. This part is surprisingly easy and it is done in three steps. First, create a text file with .service extension. Second, reference it in home your username .config systemd user folder. And third, start it with systemctl user start command. But enough theory, let's see it in action. Here I have a python sort of hello world script. It just prints this message and exits. Next to it, I created systemd unit with absolute basics. It cannot be simpler than this. An absolute minimum information which you need to provide to systemd is a short description of the unit and how to start the process. Notice absolute paths here. Having absolute path at this stage is very important. Now let me reference this unit file in my users home.config systemd folder. By referencing it, I mean to create a symbolic link located in this location to the actual file in demo folder. Let me now start the service. Notice that I don't use sudo and also I don't specify dot .service extension. Let me check the status of the service. And you can see here that it started the service, it shows the message that was printed by the service and it quit. And also from the point of view of systemd, the service is inactive, that is dead. And this is rightfully so, because what we have is just one Python script that starts, prints a message and exits. A more appropriate behavior for real life service will be to always run in background and do something. Let's simulate this with a simple while true loop. But here we need to be careful. Just leaving it this way, script will loop amazingly fast and it will consume a lot of CPU. So we need to slow down script execution a little bit. I will do that with sleep method. A more realistic program instead of sleep will listen to incoming TCP connections for example. So let me now restart the service and check its status. Now you see the hello service is up and running and from the point of view of systemd it's active. 
But the sad thing is that we don't see the script says hello systemd message. But question is not why we don't see the message, but shall we use print method as a part of system service at all? To be able to answer this question, let us learn a little bit more theory. When you execute a Python script in command line, a few things happen. First, shell starts a new process. In our case, this is Python interpreter with hello.py argument. This new process inherits from shell its environment variables, current working directory, current user, and its standard input, output, and error file handlers. So whatever shell user was, it will be the same for this process. Whenever shell used to print, the new process will print to the same place. In our case, this was the shell window. When systemd starts a process, that process will be detached from shell. And those four things, like current working directory, current user, user environment variables, and standard input, output, and error are left in the air. Either we need to take care of that, or we need to instruct systemd to do so. I will start with print method. In case of systemd, print messages might or might not end up in the systemd unit status output. This is why it is a better alternative to use a logger. By using a logger, we make sure 100% that our messages reach the right destination. In general, it is a very good practice to use logger instead of print. Let's change our little service. So first I will import logging module. Then I'll configure it. And afterwards I'll instantiate a logger. Hmm, and here is a G letter missing. Okay. And now let me replace print method with logging.info. And just for fun, let's add a counter here. Let me restart the service. You noticed here a hello.log appeared. Great, it's up and running, and we can now follow the log messages. So you see the counter going up because the process is up there and running. It's a service. Now for fun, let me restart the service. And you can guess it, this counter should reset. Great, it works perfectly. What we have learned so far are very basics of systemd. We focused only on service unit. But let's move on to a more advanced example. In the next couple of minutes, I will use a web service written in Flask to illustrate you new systemd unit types like target and timer. There won't be any theory anymore, I will just show everything by example. Let's do it. I have here a basic Flask app and I created a folder etc next to it and there I placed app.service unit. In previous example, exec start directive was easy because we used system python interpreter. What about this case? Commons itself is very easy and you can see it in Flask documentation itself. Also, documentation tells you that you need to take care of environment variable Flask app. But Flask documentation shows you how to start Flask application from the shell. When starting under systemd, however, process is detached from shell. So it's not obvious which are environment variables and where current working directory is. And worst of all, where is this Flask coming from? Let's start with easy ones. For specifying working directory of service unit, we need to use directive working directory. And in our case, it is pointing to slash demo slash web folder. For environment variable, there is another directive called environment file. And this directive points to a text file where environment variables will be declared. Let's create this file quickly.
Before filling in exec start directive, let me first install Flask. I installed Flask in Python virtual environment env. This means that in bin folder here will be the executable script Flask. This is actually the Flask command I was looking for. I want to instruct systemd to run Python script using this Python virtual environment. To accomplish that, I need to point here the absolute path of the Flask command in Python virtual environment. And this is extremely important. By doing so, Python interpreter will look for site packages in this virtual environment. Remember, absolute path here is the key. I will enable now the service. Let's check its status. Great, it works and also shows us that Flask is running on port 5000. A real-life web service rarely is alone. It is usually coupled with other services. For learning purpose, let's add a Redis service. So here is a Redis service and I also added it and already started it as user service. So it's up and running and you see here it is loaded from my demo web directory. My point here is that if I want to work on my app service, I need to start two separate services here app and Redis. And this is already repetitive typing. To avoid this kind of repetitive work, systemd offers a special unit called target. Target unit is nothing more than grouping a couple of services. Let's add it here. And because it is a systemd unit, it needs to be also added to config folder and enabled like service unit as well. And after having this done, I can just type this command and it will start all services mentioned here. Another very useful systemd unit type is timer. Timers are modern replacement for classical cron job. If compared with cron jobs, systemd timers are easier to track and they are per application. Timer unit is always associated with a service unit. Let me show what I mean. First of all, I moved all systemd related units into a new folder, systemd. I added two new units, timer unit, this one, which because of these two directives will invoke associated service every five seconds. Associated service is index.service. Systemd associates automatically, so to say, because they have the same file name index. If I would like once in two minutes frequency, I would use on calendar directive. I commented it, let it be here just for information. Also, I updated target unit with our new timer unit. An index service unit, all it does, it just calls Python interpreter with index py script, which on its turn just invokes logger and, write, and writes logging information into index.log file. Let's see how this works. I intentionally stopped and removed all systemd services from my home config systemd folder. So Flask app is not running, Redis server is down as well, and there is no activity reported in log index log file. Look how simple it is to start all services associated with our Flask app. Now you see index timer started and it is reporting uh, activity here once in 5 seconds. Flask is up and running and Redis server is up and running as well. And there is a very cool command.
which tell us all dependencies of this target and their status. You can see all of them are green. And the index is reported as white because it starts and stops. Um, so basically it's not live service from the point of view of systemd. If you enjoyed this lesson, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.